Okay, uh, Jeff here. I'm just uh, trying to work on this uh, old 1960s Sony TC350 tape recorder. And uh, there seems to be something wrong in here with the... Uh, I'm guessing it's one of the belts or one of the rubber wheels is slipping. So I'm going to see if I can uh, open this up and see what's wrong with it. Uh, I know I'm going to have to remove these switch knobs. This one has a little flathead screw in there, and so does this one here. Um, the speed control knob. And I know I'm going to have to remove these Phillips screws all around here, so I'll go ahead and do that and see what's in here. One, I'll just put those in there. There are probably a lot of shadows where I have this light here. I'm going to move this light out so I'm not blocking it so much. Uh, the thing, this thing will play. It does work. Uh, I've tried it, but it, it's it's sort of the tape speed is uh, like it's speeding up and slowing down, and and I've already cleaned the uh, pinch roller here using some rubber renew. Rubber renews it uh, using uh, this stuff here. Rubber renew. I used that on it, and it still has the problem so I'm gonna keep uh, opening this up here and see what I got and also I found the service manual for this thing online free uh, I looked at it but I don't think I need it to open it up here it apparently there are uh, rubber caps that fit over the reels here and and hook into these uh, little grooves here but those were missing when I got this online, so that that wasn't here. I think this this guy this just lifts straight off this the head cover there. Um, there's some other things I have to remove, like the pinch roller here has to come off. I think to get this this plate off here. So I'll take that off, and that just comes straight out like that. Put that in here. And there's still a few more things that have to come off. I think these little knobs in here, these record level knobs, come straight out. Yeah, they just pull straight off. They're just plastic with a little spline there. So those are there. And there's still one more screw right here I can see. So I'll take that off. Um, and then see if this thing is in loose. Whoops, I didn't mean to drop that. Oh well, I dropped uh, the little washer in there. We'll see if I can find it here in a second. But it looks like that's the same size as the other ones. Um, there's still one more, feels like there's one more thing. It's not quite loose here. What's the problem? It seems like there's another knob or something. Oh, I guess it just pivots. Yeah, it just it has to pivot up like this to, to remove it. It was hooked under this lip here. So I'm going to set this aside and see what we got here. Maybe I'll find that little washer uh, that I just dropped to. But I'm thinking it's... I'm not sure if it's one of these rubber wheels that's that's a little bit uh, sketchy or whether it's this mechanism here um, I'll pause the tape here and take a look in here and just see what I've got so so I did uh, reconnect the power here and uh, just to show what this looks like when it's operating turn on the on switch and this little light comes on and I put back the uh, control knob here so I can turn this on and off. But it, if I were to go to play, 
it looks like this. So what's happening, it looks like, is this, this motor is just constantly turning here, this drive shaft. And when I hit play, uh, these wheels, several of these rubber wheels come in contact with that shaft there. And then turns this uh, take up reel here, which is just, uh, which can be stopped with my finger, but the speed of the tape is controlled by the capstan here with the uh, the pinch roller, which I took off earlier, this guy, which goes right there. So that's what's controlled the, the speed. A um, couple things I notice is the heads look quite dirty here. Uh, you see these little felt pads that, that press the tape up against the heads uh, when, when it's playing. And this whole thing is is pretty dirty. I'm going to clean this off with some alcohol on a Q-tip. Other thing I notice is these little rubber belts are quite slack and I think uh, I may replace those. I got on eBay I got some uh, little rubber belts for not much money uh, of different sizes and I'll see if I've got one that's a little tighter because these these things get loose over the years and have to be replaced. I'll probably just keep these old ones but they're they're stretched out I think now. Uh, this is the tape counter belt right down here. So for now, I'm going to turn it off um, and I'm going to clean with some a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip uh, some of this area in here that looks pretty filthy. Um, see what I can do to get some of this dirt out of here. Yeah, you can see it's pretty dirty there. Um, so I'll just turn the tape off for now, and then I'll go at it, go at this a little bit. Okay, back again. Uh, I took about 15 minutes to do several things here. I I cleaned up uh, the heads area using a little alcohol. I should have probably had the uh, the lint-free applicators instead of the Q-tips, but that's all I had. So. It doesn't look like it left too much uh, cotton in here. This uh, turns out this is the erase head, this is the recording head, and this is the playback head right here. And so I got quite a bit of iron oxide that came off of uh, some of the tapes that have been played over the years, uh, the coating on there. And there was a lot of reddish iron oxide rusty stuff in here, and I got most of that off and off of these uh, felt pads as well. And then I also used the uh, the rubber renew on um, on these the edges of these these rubber uh, drums here uh, where they where they touch and and, uh, and are supposed to grab or not slip. And then lastly I, I found in my assortment of uh, a little uh, um, rubber belts. Uh, these are the two that I took off of there that were just too long. They had stretched and I found two that were just a little bit shorter, so now they're somewhat tight. Uh, not too tight, but just a tiny bit tight on the tape counter assembly here. And I think that's all I'm going to do here. I, uh, I can turn it on and, and see, you know, again, it'll, uh, it looks like it's... Oh, I also cleaned off the capstan here with uh, some alcohol as well, as well as the pinch roller, which I clean... I, uh, use this rubber renew on the edge of this uh, pinch roller to get most of the gunk off of there. This is the flywheel, this heavy flywheel that just sort of uh, rotates with uh, the capstan here. And um, that can just, it, it just uh, stops. The, this is the motor shaft that, that keeps turning. I think I'll clean off that motor shaft too. I didn't do that yet, but I'll do that now. And then I'll just put the cover back on and see how it works. Okay, so I've put everything back together I guess uh, other than this little cover here that has to go on but I thought I'd go ahead and demagnetize these heads while I'm at it using this inexpensive head demagnetizer that I got on eBay a while back it says uh, plug plug in the cord in place me demagnetizer tip against the recording head move the tip over the entire pole surface of the head for about one second then move the demagnetizer slowly away from the head and disconnect it. Okay. 
Um, so they, I, this is a good time, I guess, since these are move it slow over the surface for about one minute or one second. It says I can feel the vibration of the magnetic field and then slowly move it away. And I'll do the same for the record head here and slowly move it away. And I'll do the same for the erase head here. Okay, I think that's all there is to it for demagnetizing. Shouldn't have to do that too often. And uh, then I should be able to put this, this little cover back on here. Like that. And I think we're ready to go. I'll put a tape in here and see how it works. Okay, I found a, an old tape to put in here. And uh, this goes, of course, the tape goes between the pinch roller and the capstan. And I think it goes outside of this little post here. And then, of course, we have to fold over the little tape, make a little loop there to go in the little hole in the, in the reel and wind it up a few turns around there and uh, this is kind of loose because I don't have those little uh, caps those rubber caps that fit on here something's something's fishy about this metal reel here it doesn't there now it now it's seated down on the the little three uh, splines in there so I don't know what speed this tape is. Let's just see what happens. I've got it plugged into, I turn the power on, got it plugged into my amplifier with the two RCA plugs in the back. And let's just see what happens here. Um, all right, I'm getting something. And I'm seeing both the VU meters are moving, so I'm getting two channels out of this stereo tape here. Let's go ahead and fast forward it a little bit. That's how you fast forward it. And get to some regular music. Whoa. So it is working. Remains to be seen about the audio quality, but I think it's okay for such an old machine. This is uh, what a 60 year old tape recorder here. Still working. That's all. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Okay, I realized I had the uh, had it on the slow speed, and it should have been. It was recorded at the faster seven and a half inch per second. Um, Speed. So now this is what it sounds like once I've got it on the right speed. Okay, I guess this is the beat. That's the band called the beat. Not too bad for an old machine. Never was a great machine, but it's okay. All right, see ya.